Hi, this is Drew Loker, and in today's video, we're going to learn how to use the Paint.net program. If you are starting this as an actual classroom assignment, go to your Google Classroom, click on your class period, click on classwork, find the painting assignment, and open up the instructions. This assignment does start outside of classroom, and you'll eventually click on View Assignment to turn in the assignment. But for the time being, please go directly to the instructions. At the top of the instructions, you'll see shortcuts or bookmarks. The most important step is to go to the instructions and setup of document. If you're creating a painting for enrichment activities, still go to the instructions and setup document for important details as far as setting up your assignment. Painting with Paint.net uses an advanced program that allows pixel editing level layers and lots of controls with a variety of tools. To start your paint document, launch the program located in the Start menu or located on your desktop. Be sure not to use the built-in Microsoft Paint program as we are using a much better program. You'll set your canvas print size using the Control plus Shift plus R, or if prompted with a new dialog box, you will choose to do either an 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 8.5. The difference is whether you're going to do a vertical or horizontal. In this example, I have a landscape or horizontal image. To create a new document, we'll go to File, then New, and then we're going to dial in a width of 11 with a height of 8.5. Then I simply click OK and the document will be a brand new canvas. Now at first glance, you may not see all of your tools. We have essentially four tool palettes in each of the corners. We have our tools, colors, history, and layers. These four tool palettes are also represented by the four icons in the upper right hand corner. If you click these icons, those tool palettes disappear. If you hover over the tool icon, you'll see that there is a shortcut to turn those tools on. Tools is F5. Your history or your undo states is F6. Your ever important layers palette is F7. And your colors palette is F8. Once you've created your document, if you decide you'd like to change to a different orientation like vertical or portrait, you can go to image, canvas size, and you can change these two image size or print size numbers around. Horizontal is 11 inches wide, but vertical would be 8.5 inches wide by 11 inches high. And that gives you a vertical or portrait. I'm going to undo or go back to in history to my original canvas size. The first step is to create a brand new layer. You can either go to Layers and Add New Layer, which is Control plus Shift plus N, or in the Layers palette, you can click the Layers icon with the little green plus sign in the lower right corner, and that's going to create a layer. Initially, the layer is called Layer 2, and each layer that you create after this will be similarly named. However, you can change that layer name and it is helpful so that you can keep up with what is actually on each layer. For right now, we're just going to call it Layer 2. Let's go over the tools. In the upper left-hand corner of the tool palette, you'll notice three selection tools. The first is your Rectangular Select tool, then the Lasso Select, and then the Ellipse Select. We also have the Magic Wand. Starting in the upper right hand corner, we have the Move Selected Pixels arrow, and then the Move Selection arrow. 
We also have the zoom tool, the pan tool. These tools can be invoked by pressing a shortcut key, which allows you to change from one tool to another tool. And it is possible to bring up some of these tools temporarily while you're still using another tool, such as holding down the space bar, which allows you to pan around your image. We have the paint bucket, the gradient tool, paint brush, eraser, pencil, eyedropper or color picker. We have the clone stamp that allows you to clone a part of an image onto or remove a part of an image. The recolor tool, the text tool, the spline or line curve tool, and the shape tool. Now each tool that you use has parameters that are changed at the top. So for example, if we click on the shapes tool across the top, we have different tools that can be selected within the shape tool. So for example, I can draw not only a rectangle, but also circles and diamonds and parallelograms, triangles, diamonds and polygons and stars and arrows and callouts, lightning bolts, hearts. So each tool also has a fill, shape, and fill, shape with outline. So each object that you draw can actually be either just an outline or just the shape or both an outline with the shape. And the color of those objects are determined by the colors palette. So let's look at the colors palette and let's draw a rectangle. Currently we have a black line with a white fill. If we only have outline selected, then we're only going to get a white fill or a black line with white fill that is. If I change to different colors while the object is still selected on the screen, I can change those colors. I can also change the type of outline, shape, or shape fill outline. So in this case, I have the draw filled shape with outline selected. I currently have a black outline with a white fill. To make this a little bit more dramatic, I'm also going to increase the thickness of the tool. And I'm going to change the color to a red outline. And I'm going to change the secondary color to a blue. There are a couple of things I'd like you to note about the color palette. First, when you click the primary color, the next click in the color wheel will change the color. If I click the secondary color, then I'm controlling the secondary color choice. If I click this little double arrow, it'll swap the primary with the secondary color. Now you'll notice that the box that I drew is changing because it is still selected after having been drawn. While it is currently selected, it is very similar to a vector graphic that you will learn about. It is going to be a pixel graphic once I click off of it. Pixel graphics can only be edited while they are first drawn. So right now I can reshape it, I can change the color, I can change the type of shape, and I can move the entire shape around. I can rotate it. All of these things can be done as long as it has those resize handles along the corners. Once I click off the object, I can only move it by moving the entire layer. One last thing about the colors and the color palette. If I click this little black and white icon, it'll swap back to basic black and white. I do have other co color choices. And eventually I'm going to teach you about the gradients. These are quick color choices down here at the bottom and allows me to choose different colors just by a quick click. So we'll leave it with a blue primary 
and a red secondary. So one of the first things that I want to do is create another layer for each different object, especially as the different objects may not relate to the previous object. For example, if I want to do a roof, I could draw it on layer 2, but at first it would be easier and better to go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm even going to double click the word layer 3 and call this roof. The reason why is because once I click off of my layer or the object that I've just drawn, we'll call this one the house, it is now part of the canvas. And the only way to get rid of it, delete it, change it, or move it is to move the entire layer. Now this will make more sense as we continue to move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out a roof. I'm going to go to the shapes and I'm going to go to rectangle and I'm going to choose a triangle. All right, so we're going to name layer two house. And I'm going to name layer three roof. And that just helps with organization. And I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and go to a triangle. And I'm going to change the secondary color to a slate, like a lighter gray. And make sure that the layer that you want to draw on is the active layer. In this case, roof is the active layer. If you draw it on the wrong layer, you'll have to undo it in the history. And I'm going to draw out a roof. And if it doesn't line up, that's okay for a couple reasons. Why? First, because when the graphic is first drawn, it can be moved around, much like a vector graphic. But even if I click off the graphic and it's attached to that canvas, I can move the entire canvas around relative to the layer, which I'll go ahead and demonstrate. So I'll click on the Move tool, I'll click off, and you'll notice that I can move the entire layer. Now that'll become more apparent later. Later versus layer. The next thing I'm going to do is create another layer. And this one I'm going to ca uh, call Ground. And I'm going to do a control D to deselect. You'll notice I've got the marching ants. And I'm going to do a control D or escape key to deselect. And I'm going to draw out a shape. And I'm going to do a grass. Except we don't want a triangle. So let's change that. And while it is selected, I can change even the type of shape. Now, first, I just covered up the bottom of my box, but that's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and click off of that. And I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm going to call this one the sky. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this time I'm going to go to blue and swap those two colors around. And I'll show you how to do a gradient later. And then I'm going to go back to the shape tool. And I'm going to draw out a blue sky. Now first our sky and ground are covering. So I'm going to bring the roof forward up above. And I'm going to bring the house up above. And you'll notice that now my layers are more uh, correct so that I have the roof and the house and the sky and the ground. So as I continue to develop this, we do need to go ahead and save. I'm going to go File, Save. And I'm going to call this House for Video by Drew Loker. And we want to save it as a paint.net. It's very important that you don't save it as a PNG or a JPEG. It has to be saved as a paint.net. Go ahead and put that in your L drive. I don't have an L drive on this computer, but navigate to my computer and find your L drive. And I'm just going to put it in my pictures folder for right now. 
and I'm going to save. 